started really in the first half of the 19th century, uh, when first batch of Yale graduates went to China in the 1830s as uh, educators and missionaries. So Peter Parker collaborated with Lan Kuang, who was a Chinese artist, and they did uh, some very explicit documentation of diseases, which became a very valuable source for training Yale medical students, and in fact, for training medical students in the West. Starting in 1850, when the first Chinese student called the Yan Wing, who entered Yale College and graduated in 1854. He then went back to China and persuaded the uh, Qing court to bring more students back to Yale and to New England. And those students later on played a very uh, influential role in modernization of uh, China. In 1917, when Fudan was transformed from a college to a university, its founding president, Li Denghui, actually was a Yale a graduate, class of 1899. Uh, Li Denghui played a very influential role in establishing the university and introduced lots of uh, Yale's philosophy in running the university. And that was uh, very influential in establishing Fudan as one of the best universities in China. And of course, since then, there are lots of uh, exchange activities uh, have occurred. And for example, in modern days, in uh, 2003, Yale established a Yale Fudan Developmental Biology Center. And that center has played a very important role, both in promoting Fudan's research in developmental biology and also in expanding our research here at Yale, the Yale China Association which was established in 1901. And now over more than 100 years now, uh, this association has played a very important role in training teachers and medical practitioners in China as an exemplary um, case of placing that place, uh, schools in Changsha, a big city in the middle part of China. And uh, this continuous training has been going on now for over 100 years, and today it's still going very strong. It's amazing to see that, uh, you know, there are actually 96 exchange programs going on between Yale and China, involving 26 different departments at Yale and 44 universities in China. This relationship is truly beneficial to both sides. To China, by having this relationship, it benefited tremendously from the most advanced thinking, knowledge, and practice. And moreover, Yale also helped China uh, to train a, a, a number of very important leaders in diverse fields of the, the society. And for Yale, the first advantage is that the students and scholars from China on Yale campus, they directly contribute by their talent to Yale's uh, research, intellectual power and cultural life. By tapping into that vast resource, uh, Yale's research activities uh, have further opportunities to flourish. China really is the largest country in the world, representing nearly one-fourth of the world. So that gives Yale a direct and a privileged opportunity to investigate and study that world. By training some of the leaders in China over centuries, Yale truly uh, exercised its influence uh, to that very important part of the world. And that to me is very important to position Yale as truly a, glo a global leader in higher education. Mm -hmm.